one of the most iconic box office sensations of the 1930s, was also dubbed one of the most durable and formidable female screen legends of all time. She was born Lucille Fay Lesseur in San Antonio, Texas, on March 23rd, presumably sometime between 1904 and 1908. Studio bosses thought her name sounded too much like Sewer, so they ran a magazine contest to change it. The name selected was Joan Crawford. She didn't like it much, but eventually accepted it. She and her brother Hal were raised in poverty. Her father, Thomas E. Lesseur, was a construction worker who abandoned the family before she was even a year old. Her mother, Annabelle Johnson, was a laundry worker who later married and divorced Henry J. Casson. He ran the Ramsey Opera House, where she enjoyed watching vaudeville performances at an early age and developed a passion for dancing. She attended two private Catholic academies as a working student, but regretted only acquiring a sixth grade education. She cooked, cleaned, changed beds, and did laundry. All of this will contribute to an ongoing obsession with cleanliness and perfection that will later tarnish her legacy. In her late teens, she put her passion for dancing to work with traveling theatrical companies before debuting on Broadway in 1925 when she was discovered and signed by Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer. Her hair was dyed, freckles covered with makeup, and back teeth pulled to create the appearance of higher cheekbones. In the 1920s, she was a nationally known flapper. These young women flaunted their disdain for conventional norms through an emboldened sense of fashion, style, and demeanor. By the 1930s, she's one of the highest paid females in the nation. As an actor, she portrayed hardworking, powerful women and easily made the transition from silent films to talkies. Studios oversaturated the public with her appearances that by the late 1930s, her popularity began to wane and she was labeled box office poison. Demonstrating her durability, she went on a self-promotion campaign and made her big comeback in 1945 with her Oscar-winning performance as Mildred Pierce. Criticized for her broad shoulders, designer Gilbert Adrian chose to showcase them rather than hide them. This sparked a trend with the use of shoulder pads in women's fashion. There was a legendary feud between her and fellow actor Betty Davis that went on for decades and sparked a tremendous amount of media attention. Though it was clear these two were not friends, it was Joan who proposed working together in the critically acclaimed movie, Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. It was a huge success and nominated for five Academy Awards. Her first husband was Douglas Fairbanks Jr., the son to Douglas Fairbanks Sr., whose wife was Mary Pickford. These American film pioneers traveled in the social circle of the media mogul, William Randolph Hearst, and his movie star girlfriend, Marion Davies. This close association will open many doors for Joan, including the one here at Hearst Castle, where she'll be invited with many other Hollywood A-list movie stars. Though her first three marriages ended in divorce, her fourth husband, Alfred Steele, was the president of the Pepsi-Cola Company. Upon his death in 1959, she filled his vacancy on the board until they forced her retirement in 1973. Through it all, she raised four adopted children. The two eldest, Christina and Christopher, claimed an abusive relationship with her, whereas the two youngest twins, Kathy and Cindy, claimed a household filled with love. She passed away May 10th, 1977, in her Manhattan apartment. A year later, her eldest daughter, Christina, released the infamous memoir, Mommy Dearest. It prompted an incredible amount of media scrutiny, shock, and disbelief, tarnishing her legacy. Her name will forever be linked with the phrase, no wire hangers, apparently arising from her early childhood work experiences. Lord. To this day, Joan Crawford is remembered for her amazing ability to overcome obstacles in an acting career spanning almost 45 years and approximately 80 films. She's recognized by the American Film Institute as the 10th greatest female screen legend of classic American cinema. Her constant quest to redefine herself exhibited she was so much more than wire hangers, more than the 20s flapper, the Oscar winner, or the president of a multi-billion dollar corporation. She was even more than how she's remembered as a mother. It is for these very reasons that she's as relevant today as she was then. And why the title? Icon suits her best. Thank you, Joan Crawford, for your durability and resilience 
as a powerful symbol in the entertainment world.